what's going on in North Carolina, you can't make this stuff up. Um, I hope Eastern North Carolina is proud of our new governor because she comes from down here. She made three promises to the people of North Carolina in the last, not even 12 months, last eight or nine months. First promise she made was October 23rd, just about 10 days before she was elected when she was still interested in what we thought. And she said it would be the wrong thing to do to raise taxes in a down economy, in a recession. The next promise she made was March 9th in her state of the state address when she said, and I quote, I don't care what else happens, we are going to increase per, per, per people spending in the state of North Carolina. And the third promise she made, while the budget was still being written, was we are not going to balance this budget on the backs of the working families in North Carolina. And she did something that's even hard for a politician to do. When she signed that budget bill, she broke all three promises with one stroke of a pen. Taxes going up a billion dollars in a recession, and one out of every nine North Carolinians is out of work. How many people know one? And by the end of this year, economists think it could be one out of every seven. So you'll know more. And history and every economist who can walk up right in fog a mirror are in complete agreement that raising taxes in a recession is a disastrous thing to do. It's a jobs killer. It's a jobs killer. We already have the highest corporate income taxes and the highest personal income taxes anywhere in the southeast United States, which means that any time a company anywhere in America or the world has picked out the southeast United States as a place they'd like to move their employees and they're coming to, North Carolina is the last place they're going to come because we're the most expensive. We're uncompetitive with states like Tennessee and South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia, and Alabama, and Louisiana, and Florida. They're not coming here. They're going somewhere else. That textile employer I just talked to you about just invested $275 million in a plant in Anderson, South Carolina, because it's a better place to do business. Then, of course, she said, uh, you know, the state's number one priority is, is public education. Out of a $20 billion budget, we spend 60% of it on public education. Roughly 200,000 state employees in North Carolina, half of them are teachers. The per pupil spending didn't go up like she promised. It went down a quarter of a billion dollars. And that's going to cost some teachers jobs in this state, maybe right here in Pitt County. I'll tell you one thing that wasn't decreased. The $30 million we spent on educating prisoners in North Carolina. Cuts for our school kids. No cuts for the prisoners. That's part of what I call the preposterous priorities that the Democrats in North Carolina are forcing down your throats through this budget. And then finally the third thing. She said they wouldn't balance the budget on the working families in North Carolina. Well, out of the billion dollars in tax increases, $900 million of it is a sales tax. Who pays a sales tax? Everybody, working people, people not working, disabled people, children, grandmothers, everybody. We all pay it. Anybody in here a working family? Three promises she broke. That's bad for North Carolina, but I tell you what, it's going to be good for us on November 2nd, 2010, because we are going to remind the people of North Carolina of the preposterous priorities and the broken promises in the Democratic budget that just passed. And I'm very proud of our Republican elected members of the General Assembly. Every single elected Republican in the state of North Carolina, House and Senate, voted against the budget. And that hadn't happened since Jonathan Brooks was still in college. Heck, it hadn't happened since I was still in college. So Republicans are united about this. And the people of North Carolina, the more they learn about this budget, the more they're going to be outraged by it. And that's why we're, on a, we're in the midst of a statewide media tour right now. Representative Skip Stam, who's the State House Minority Leader, Senator Phil Berger, who's the Senate Minority Leader. We're going into the targeted House and Senate districts where we need to pick up Democrat seats to get a majority, and we're putting a face on this budget. In Burlington, it was the Tony Forrest budget. In Lexington, it was the Hugh Holliman budget. In Salisbury, it was the Lorraine Coates budget. In Kenneth tomorrow will be the Braxton budget. And in Newbury, it'll be the Alice Hunterhill budget. We're going to remind the people of North Carolina that the reason their taxes went up 
and spending for public education went down, and there's still a lot of, there's no other way to describe it, just plain stupid spending in this budget. The Republicans identified $600 million they could cut without too much trouble. And by the way, the budget deficit really wasn't four and a half billion dollars. The Democrats just used that number to scare us into thinking that they need to raise taxes. It was really only about a billion. Which means that in a $20 billion budget, if they just cut spending 5%, they could have balanced that budget without raising taxes. And if Republicans had been a majority of the House and Senate, that's what would have happened. And the people of North Carolina with and without jobs wouldn't be paying another billion dollars a year in taxes. So I want to show up, I want to hold up a little placard here. In the NCGOB headquarters, this sign is in everybody's office, and it's on the door leading into my office. November 2nd, 2010. This is our goal, and this is our focus. And if we don't do anything other than elect, re-elect Richard Burr this year, we have absolutely got to get a Republican majority elected in the House and or the Senate.